Let me share just a couple of the top of mind things that I really love. First of all, we continue to be visual. We've added, uh, thanks to Crystal, a visual outline at the start of each uh, uh, tool, and it outlines the steps of what you're going to do. Makes it so much easier to track. It's such a little thing, but it's amazing what this little visual does to help make the tool flow. Um, the uh, key concepts uh, are visuals. So um, it, it's kind of like if you had a favorite song and you you start to hear it being played on the radio or someplace else and, and, and you hear a couple uh, notes in it and you know that song. Well, I hope that the key concept visuals will become the same with you, that you'll see the uh, outline of it the image of it, and you'll know right away what uh, tool that concept uh, relates to. And there are some additional icons added throughout to help you recognize some things. One, you can find the tips because there's a little icon that shows you here's another tip, and there's a whole lot of them. Uh, there are the key concepts, and they have a little icon to call that out as to what is new uh, or what is unique to uh, LCD. And there's an icon that calls out the interconnectedness between this action and the other actions there so that you can start taking advantage of the nonlinear aspects of the model. Now, the other thing that I'm loving beyond the visuals is that we've been more uh, clear on names of things. We recognize that there is huge power in naming things. It gives us an opportunity to talk about it. I mean, think about it. How many of you have been putting together your learning cluster design and you don't know what to call it? You say, you, you know that three circle thing uh, or or that Mickey Mouse ears thing? Uh, well, well, now it has an official name. It's called the learning cluster map. Now, there are more things that we've named uh, and, and I really am happy with that because it does make it easier to talk about it. The other thing I'm happy about is that I'm seeing as I read through this that the model continues to build and support on professional pride. You know, we are the experts on, on how people learn and how to help them learn more and faster. Uh, and so, you know, I'm really proud of that. And I, I'm thinking, you know, as I look at the charts and the tables and diagrams, I'm thinking about, hmm, as I talk with stakeholders and my clients and customers, which of these might I reveal a little to my stakeholders while I'm talking with them and in the process help educate them to understand that Training design is a profession. I want them to walk away with the idea of, wow, I didn't know there was so much that goes into learning projects. And I want them to come across uh, with the idea that says, ah, this gal knows what she's doing when it comes to designing training. This learning cluster thing can help do that. I'm also sensing that the model more than ever supports digital age resilience. What do I mean by that? As I look at it and I think of all the new tech that's coming down the road, um, I think the model is going to be there to help us know when to use uh, that technology, if we should even use the technology. I mean, who is it technology for the purpose of technology or does it serve a specific learner persona in their moments of learning need. And it'll help us measure if that new tech is actually helping and making a difference uh, so that we can learn our way into uh, using that new tech to make sure that it makes a difference and it's worth it. So that's what I love about the version 2.0 tools. And I can't wait for you all to dig into them and start telling us what you love about them.